Hi guys, Jeff Yoder here. Um, I've been asked to talk to you guys about root development. So when we're thinking about root development up here in the Pacific Nor Northwest, we kind of focus on three main areas. We focus on our phosphorus nutrition, our calcium nutrition, and our soluble carbon. So first off in our phosphorus nutrition, phosphorus is the energy storage of the plant. Um, well, ATP is the energy storage of the plant. So you need phosphorus season long for that plant to have the energy to do the processes it needs in order to grow that crop. So phosphorus early on helps with the energy of the roots. And then as you progress through the season, that energy is still critical, but it's used for other things. So when we're thinking about phosphorus sources early season for roots, we need something that won't tie up in the soil because phosphorus is a divalent ion so it has two charges so it grabs really tightly to positive cations like calcium and it's really hard to disassociate those so when we're thinking phosphorus nutrition we have to think of something that is protected and also very efficient to the plant and then we go to calcium nutrition and we're kind of focusing on the same things there since calcium is divalent as well, we need something that's protected. It's not gonna tie up with the nutrition you already have in the soil and also is highly efficient in getting into the plant. So you need calcium for structure of the plant, not only tall plants late season, but early in the season, calcium is what's on the root tip or the root cap. So that's what helps the plant push through the soil and get a nice foundation of roots underneath it. So calcium is critical early season for that root growth and then later season that calcium goes to helping build structure for the plants. So let's go ahead and do a little demo. I want to show you just how reactive those two nutritional elements are. Okay so I don't know about you guys but I am a visual learner. I never really Nothing clicks until I actually see it happen in the field. Um, so I'm sure some of you guys have seen this demonstration in the past, but it's a good refresher just to keep in mind what's going on in the soil. We can't always see the reactions that are going on in the soil, but it's good to know what's happening. So here I have an unprotected phosphorus source in 1034-0. Here I have a solution of Rutex and water, which is the redox protected phosphorus source. And then here I have some calcium nitrate, some free calcium. So let's go ahead and add some calcium nitrate to our protected phosphorus and see what happens. Give that a little mix here. You can see there's nothing hanging to the walls of the beaker. It looks pretty homogenous in there. So we'll set that aside, see what happens. Now here, we're gonna add our calcium nitrate to our unprotected phosphorus. And if you can see that, it's already starting to react. Give it a little swirl here. And it's gelling up a little bit. You can see that reaction happened very quick. And uh, so now we have a reaction. We have, we've combined two different things and we've created something new. So right here is the reaction that happened. We're taking ammonium phosphate and calcium nitrate and creating calcium phosphate and ammonium nitrate. So that's the reaction that's going on right here. And it is a very quick reaction. This happens very, very quickly. You can see here it's gelling up. As I let this reaction keep on happening, it's going to get more and more solid. And this happens in the soil. It takes a while to happen, but once those, um, those nutrients get through the soil solution and touch each other, that reaction happens almost instantly. Now, so quick in fact, that it can also happen in the pivot. Take a look at these pictures here. I received these from a consultant who the grower 
didn't pay attention to his water test and he put 1034 into a pivot that draws high calcareous, high calcium well water. And it plugged up the screens instantly. So it's good to pay attention to not just the nutrition that you're putting on the field, pay attention to the water you're putting on the field too. There's a lot, water is your biggest input by far. You put more volume, more pounds of water on your field than anything else. So it's really important to pay attention to what's in your water. And if you have free calcium, steer clear from unprotected phosphorus sources because this is exactly what's gonna happen. It's gonna crystallize and create calcium phosphate. Now calcium phosphate isn't available to plants, but carbonic acid, which is um, carbon dioxide dissolved in water, will disassociate this and break it back apart. But if the plant's not there to grab it right away or something's not there to satisfy those charges, it's gonna tie right back up. So I just wanted to share this with you guys. It's a good visual way to uh, remember what's happening when you put that calcium and unprotected calcium and unprotected phosphorus together. And as you can see, our Rutex and calcium nitrate is just fine. No reaction there. They, we haven't created any heat. Um, we haven't precipitated anything out. This is a true mixture where this is a reaction. We've created something new. So now let's talk about soluble carbon. So not all carbon in the soil is created equal. When you're thinking soluble carbon, you can't directly translate that to organic matter. So kind of a rough estimate for you, in the percentage of organic matter that you see on your soil test, about 85% of that is non-humus. So that's gonna take a long time, decades to break down into soluble carbon that's actually dissolved carbon in the soil solution. So of that number, 85% is non-humus, 15% is actual humus, which is gonna break down uh, relatively quicker, but not very quick. That's anywhere from days to years, depending on the health of your soil, uh, weathering, moisture, there's a whole lot of factors, microbial activity, and typically, we see that of that soil, only one to 10 parts per million is actually soluble carbon dissolved in the soil solution. Now that soluble carbon is what all the microbes feed on in the soil. Um, and that could come anywhere from breaking down organic matter in the soil, root exudates is also a main uh, contributor to soluble carbon in the soil solution because that rhizosphere or the zone right around the roots is rich with life. That is where all the magic happens. So the plant has a symbiotic relationship with everything in that rhizosphere. It exudes carbohydrates or sugars, which are carbon-based forms of energy, out into the soil to feed the fungi, the bacteria, the microbes that are in that rhizosphere right around the roots because Everything living in that rhizosphere helps mineralize nutrition in the soil through it eating carbon and decaying and dying. And the whole life cycle in that rhizosphere helps feed the plant. So if we can help the plant out by not having it spend so much energy pushing sugars out of the roots and feeding that rhizosphere, if we can create a healthy rhizosphere where the plant doesn't need to sacrifice as much of its energy, we can put that energy into the crop and actually harvest it and get it into the bin. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, not all organic matter is equal. We're really after that soluble carbon in the root zone um, just to influence the microbial activity in the rhizosphere because that is what mineralizes the soil. Um, having a good, healthy microbial activity also helps increase soil structure, which helps your air water relations, soil flocculation, um, so it's, it's real key to make sure you have soluble carbon early season when you're trying to get those roots established as well as throughout the entire season. Because getting a nice strong foundation of roots early 
I think is critical to setting yourself up for success for that crop. But maintaining good root development and root growth season long really pays dividends. So let's go see if we can find an example of that. So I haven't really stressed why we focus on root development so much. Um, I'm a firm believer that the most important pass you're ever going to do across your field is when you're dragging your planter behind you. Because getting that seed at the right depth, at the right moisture, with the right soil temperature and the right fertility package, it really sets you up for success and sets the yield potential. Once you put the seed in the ground, your yield potential starts to go down as the environment um, stresses that crop. So early season root development is important for even emergence, um, maintaining even vegetative growth, putting a nice foundation of roots underneath that plant so it can build a nice framework to have a good crop load on it. So that early season root growth is critical for setting up the crop for success. And then mid season, I think you still need to focus on root development and root growth so that you can finish your crop. So as you can see, we're out here in a potato field right now. It's the beginning of September, end of the season. They're starting to lay down. Uh, well, they've been laid down for a little while here. Uh, these are clear waters. Um, we're about maybe three, four weeks away from harvest. Um, get these things to bulk up a little bit more. But right now is when you wanna make sure that you have done all that early season work where you have a good foundation of roots underneath this plant in order to bulk it up and have lots of root interception zones to get that moisture and the nutrition into the tuber. So let's uh, take a peek at what we got going on here. Like I said, these are some clear waters. They got plenty of vine. Let's see if I can find one here. We have plenty of vine on these guys. Late season, they're starting to go down. Let's see what we got. So we got some nice big tubers under here. But what I really want to show you is these roots. This late in the season, these roots look really good. We've got a lot of fine feeder roots. The color's really good. They're white, they're healthy. They're still picking up all the nutrition and putting it into these tubers. So early season root development, really setting yourself up for success, but maintaining that root development and that root growth season long really translates into yield. This is when these roots are really doing their heavy lifting. So having a really good framework and a foundation of good healthy roots all the way throughout the season really pays dividends. So we're out here in an onion field that's been on the full redox program. Uh, season long and we really stressed early season root development out here because onions get planted real early in the spring when the soil is still, still very cool um, so getting good roots underneath it so that you can bulk them up is really important um, there's been a lot of Rutex, a lot of H85, a lot of Root RX out on this field um, but I think it's it's paid off so Right here, we have a three and three quarter inch red onion, real big. These things have already been undercut. The roots have been knocked off, but season long, we've had some really good roots. Um, I'll throw up a couple pictures of the roots that we had this season. They looked really good year long. Um, and so when you're talking about early season root development, my go-to rates are two pounds of Rutex, one pound of H85, a splash of root rx if the situation calls for it um, out here on the onions we typically do like eight to 12 ounces of root rx and then we come back and hit it again over the top through the pivot uh, in potatoes we use a pint of root rx in furrow right on the seed just to really get that uh, that seed piece cranking so my typical rates are right in there uh, we generally hit it right on the seed and then come back two to four weeks after planting. Once we have full emergence, hit it again, maintain that uh, 
that soluble, very efficient phosphorus and soluble carbon in the root zone, give that plant some energy to get a nice foundation of roots underneath it. And then if you have that nice foundation, you can bulk up your crop at the end of the year and uh, hopefully they'll look as good as these onions.